Repriming cartridges for the Remington Model 700 Ultimate Muzzle Loader, William Hovey Smith, 2015. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here we're getting a gun ready to shoot at 300 yards. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, and we're resuming our work with the Remington Model 700 Ultimate Muzzle Loader. Now, what we have done with this gun presently is we have taken the leather wood scope and we have remounted it on the gun. We've also changed this mount right here. And this has a little more forward set to the scope, so it moves this away from the eye, which is useful in a hard recoiling gun, which this thing is with full loads. However, uh, at this stage, we're not going to be shooting full loads out of it. The nice thing about muzzle loaders is that you custom load each round that goes down the barrel. And there's no reason to shoot a balls to the wall maximum load with every shot if you don't need it to kill your basics or do the job that you need to do. Now this is billed as a 300 yard muzzle loader. Well, okay. Well, truth is, uh, yeah, almost any decent modern inline muzzle loader will shoot and kill game at 300 yards if you do your proper preparation and know where the bullet drop and wind drift is for any given load. After all, back during the muzzle loading era, they shot regularly at a thousand yards, much less 300. But these guys knew their guns, and they really did. What Remington has done is built a gun that will shoot a 200 grain powder charge and a sabotaged 150 grain solid copper bullet. Now copper is lightweight for its length compared to lead and so you have less recoil. Well I have shot this load out of this gun and I don't like it. It beats you to death or at least it beats me to death and more punishment than I want to take out of any gun. In fact with the iron sights that I had on it shot worse than many African calibers I've shot, including things like the 458 lot. Literally. Yeah. Well, would it kill game 300 yards? Well, yes, and so will many other things. Uh, what it does is it extends your point blank trajectory somewhat. It did do that. However, it's still not out to 300 yards. Uh, you still have considerable inches of drop at that range. Is it a more powerful load? Does it get more bundle energy out there? Yeah. But how much do you need to kill your deer, assuming that your shot placement is highway decent? So great power delivered energy is not necessarily desirable in all cases. So you want something that'll get there, that'll kill your beastie, that'll do it reasonably efficiently but not blow hunks off of it, or such things. But, the immediate problem in hand, okay, these are the brass cases that Remington gives you with this particular gun. And this one has been fired, and the primer protrudes a little bit, which is an indication to me of poor headspace because the load I shot this with was a round ball load. This was not a high pressure load, not for this guy. So uh, you need to reload it. Now Remington doesn't bother to tell you what these cases are. Well, as it turns out, uh, they're elongated versions of the 45 ACP. So you can reload these with hand tools designed for the 45 ACP. And I have here a Lyman hand tool. Right now, it has a primer extraction die in it, so you put it in, clump, that extracts the primer, you take the case out. Now it also does a minor amount of resizing right here at the tip of the case. Here's the other one. Bingo. All right, extracted the primer. So these are now ready to reload. Okay. Now this is a rimless case, so-called. 
there are other varieties of cases. And just for completeness sake, this is a rimmed case. This has to be a 20 gauge shot shell. This is a semi-rimmed case uh, for the 38 Super Auto. And I think this is about the only one I remember that uses this particular uh, type of semi-rim. There may be others, but that's the only one I can think of. And this is a rebated rim case, where the head of the case here is actually smaller than the body. Uh, this is so you can load a 50 caliber round in a mechanism that's otherwise designed to shoot the 223 uh, U.S. military cartridge. Okay, so this was shooting an AR platform rifle. Boom! Slip! Just like that. All right, so we have extracted our primers. So with a Lyman tong tool, uh, you just screw out one die. You know, the threads are real fine in here. This is steel and aluminum, so they put a lot of threads to give you good strength. And this is the die that sets your primer. And I've had this set since, all oh, the 60s, I think. New percussion cap. Empty. Put it in here. Crunch. Crunch. Okay. One reprime case. Now, as it so happens, uh, Rivington recommends that you use Remington Large Magnum Rifle Primers. And you should use the Magnum Rifle Primers because they are tougher. And this thing does generate some pressure, so you need that. But I couldn't find the Remingtons. However, the Winchester Large Rifle Magnum Primers will work. Now, the Large Pistol Primers are actually the same size, but don't use them because they are not designed to hold this kind of pressure. So now we have our new cases primed. Now the nice thing about a tool like this, it's portable, rather than using a bench tool, that you can actually take this and put on the shooting bench with you. And so we'll actually uh, perhaps even reload some of these priming cases in the field uh, should we happen to run short sometime. Go shoot a variety of bullets. Uh, this is the 270 grain ball at. Uh, we know the gun shoots this very well with 70 grains of powder, and that's what we tried for a turkey load. We didn't get a turkey, but the load itself was effective, 245 grains. Okay. I really like things that run about 300 grains for deer, but Ian McMurchy uh, killed a lot of deer uh, in his lifetime with this load, which is uh, a solid lead 240 grain sabotage bullet uh, from Thompson Center Arms. And here is tradition's hollow base bullet that doesn't use a sabo. So these can be loaded very rapidly, much more rapidly than you can uh, a sabotage projectile. For example, if you happen to have a hog down and you need to get a bullet in him in a hurry and don't have an auxiliary firearm. Incidentally, if you're hog hunting, you should always take an auxiliary firearm with you. Percussion revolver uh, is nice. Okay, so we're gonna have to go out there. We're gonna have to make us a range that I can shoot to 300 yards. So I'm gonna be about doing that. We've got some timber that's dead, and we're gonna take that down. I've already mowed out my food plot, so I've got 300 yards to shoot from one of my built-up shooting stands. And so we're gonna make that a 300-yard range, and incidentally. It's actually one of the places I hunt deer. It's part of my food plots. So uh, we're going to be about doing that, and that'll be the subject of another video. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you take. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. You can call these ignition systems priming assemblies or whatever else, but they're based on an elongate 45 ACP case. 
Now, I am the author of Extreme Muzzleloading. Among other books, I have Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, as well as Shooting and Maintaining Your Muzzleload, and Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzleloading Pistols. Now, these are among the books in my ebook series. I also have a series of business books based on the profit model. Now, the first title out is Ideas for New Businesses, which tells you how to find ideas for your million, a billion dollar business. And here's a little blurb about me. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 400 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.